there's a gap between the basics of JavaScript and what you need to understand coding in React. Not a massive one, mind you, but enough of one to make it worth exploring. Here then are seven JavaScript skills you need to be able to code in React. We'll go through how they show up in React and how they can be useful for you. And even if you're not interested in React, you'll still need these concepts to write good JavaScript code. But first, let's talk about a quick yet fundamental point. JavaScript considers some values to be falsy. Although they're not strictly speaking false, they still fail an if statement. In other terms, JavaScript can behaves as if these values are false. Falsy values in JavaScript include among others, undefined, null, the empty string, an empty array, zero, and nan, not a number. This is useful for understanding Boolean operators and the ternary operators. So let's talk about Boolean operators. You're no doubt familiar with using the Boolean operators and and or in conditions. JavaScript allows you to do a lot more than that. You see, these operators don't always return a Boolean value. Let me explain. Let's start with the Boolean or operator. This evaluates the first element of the expression and looks at whether it's falsy or not. If the value is truthy, the operator returns the first term, the one to the left of the operator. If not, it returns the second one, the one to the right. Now let's imagine we have a variable, for example, name. We don't know whether it is set or not. If it's not set, we want to set a default value. The or operator allows us to do the following. Name equals name or default name. If name is undefined or null or an empty string, the operator will return the second term, default name. If the name is defined, it will be returned by the operator. In this way, we've set a default value to name if it's not set. The AND operator has exactly the opposite behavior. If the first term is truthy, the AND operator returns the second term. Let's see how we can use this in React. Imagine we have a variable called error. It might or might not contain an error message. In the JSX part of our code in React, we can some write something like this, error message AND span brackets, error message, close a span. In this case, the AND operator only returns the span if the error message variable is truthy. We only show the span if there is actually an error. Now let's talk about the ternary operator. There's a condensed if else statement called the ternary operator. It works like this with a question mark and a colon. Variable truthy, question mark, it is true, colon, it is false. What the operator does is check if the variable is truthy. If it is, the operator returns the first term after the question mark. If it's not, it returns the term after the colon, the third term. In our error message, if we also want to show a message when there is no error, we can then add the following to our JSX code. Error, question mark, span, open brackets, error, close span, colon, span, there is no error, close the span. Now let's talk about destructuring arrays and objects. Let's look simply at the declaration of a use state hook. We have const square brackets counter comma set counter equals use state zero. Look at how the counter and the set counter variables are defined. They're defined from within the array itself. In reality, what's happening is we're mapping the variables to the return of the use state. The hook returns an array. This syntax assigns the first value of the array to the first variable and the second value to the second variable. It's a shorter way and a more elegant way of writing const temp equals use state zero, const counter equals temp square brackets zero, const set counter equals temp square brackets one. As you can see, the destructuring syntax is a lot more concise and does away with the temporary variable. The syntax for objects is similar. You've probably come across it in an import statement. For example, import brackets use state from React. How does that work? Let's say we have a user object that has an age and has a name. So we have const user equals curly brackets name Bob age 42. We can retrieve a name directly using destructuring. We would do const name equals user. This would amount to having const name equals user dot name. Now let's talk about the arrow function. The arrow function is a more concise way of writing functions. In React, being concise helps you write readable code. Arrow functions are also the natural way to write use effect hooks. As a quick recap, the normal way of writing a function is to use the function keyword. So to use function add 
brackets a comma b curly brackets return a plus b we can define this as a narrow function by declaring const add equals brackets a comma b arrow curly brackets return a plus b in fact since there's only one return statement within this function we can actually do away with the brackets and the return statement itself doing const add equals a comma b arrow a plus b and this is useful in particular when we're using the array functions let's talk about array functions in particular map and filter arrays have interesting functions that can operate on them there are two in particular that I find especially useful in react map and filter both of these take a function as a parameter and return a new array filter returns an array that only contains the items for which the functions passed as a parameter returns a truthy value if we filter an array of numbers by the function that returns modulo 2 our new array now only contains odd numbers this is because even numbers return 0 when applied through modulo 2 and 0 is falsy map on the other hand returns an array where each new item is the return value of the function if we pass a function that multiplies its input by 2 the output is an array of doubles of the input how is this useful in react say we're building a to-do list application we have an array of tasks that we want to display these are stored in the tasks variable each item has for example an ID a title a completed state which can be true or false let's also say we've defined a task and component we can create a list by using the map function to return a task component for every single item we can actually also show only incomplete items by using the filter to hide items where complete is true so we do tasks.filter task return not item complete and then we map in the same way the task now as a small aside we need to specify a key value to help react track exactly what has changed now there are many other useful array functions worth mentioning and the subject deserves a more in-depth treatment but these are the two that I find the most useful in react now let's talk about the spread operator if you use objects in the state you'll need to start using the spread operator the spread operator allows us to create a duplicate object with all the same values so for example we have a user which is defined with a name as Bob and age is 42 then if we define a user one which is equal to user and a user two which is equal to curly brackets dot 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 user if we do console log of user equals equals user one that's actually true whereas if we do console log of user equals equals user two that's false now why is this useful it's useful because react tracks changes to know when to re-render parts of the component tree in the example above user and user one are actually exactly the same object now if we set the age property to 43 on user one user one will still be equal to user now let's imagine that react was actually tracking the state of the user object changing the value of one of the properties of the user object won't trigger the detection of a state change let's say for example we have a set user function that's meant to update the user state if we do user.age equals 43 set user user this won't actually trigger the change detection user is still exactly the same object we need to create a new object using the spread data operator and so we do set user curly brackets dot 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 user comma age colon 43 what's happening here the two curly brackets mean we've actually created a new object and the spread operator acts like it splits open or spreads the initial object into the new one if we were to write what happens here explicitly it would be particularly long-winded we need to first create a blank new object then we list all the keys on the user object then we iterate over the list of keys while we're doing so we set the value of the property in the new object to the corresponding value in the old object finally we set the new change value and this is anything but concise the spread operator condenses all that into one single line and the resulting code is as readable if not more once you understand what it means now remember using advanced features of a language should never trump readability however if used correctly these features help make your code more readable not less now what else is there to master to keep learning 
First, it's vital to understand how promises and a sync await work. This isn't a core part of React. There are hooks that are able to hide the complexity for you. But if you want to master JavaScript, it's unavoidable. If you want to master React, you need to understand how hooks work and the beginner's mistakes to avoid.